Hello and welcome. My name is Harry Tottenham. Welcome to Colu TV. It's the first time we've seen you for a match day show in 2022. Thank you for joining us. Happy New Year to you. You join us live from the JobServe Community Stadium. Colchester United taking on Barrow today in a crucial match in League Two. Barrow sitting just two places above us currently. You've got some games in hand, but essential that we pick up the three points today and start that zoom up the table. Ahead of kickoff, though, we've got plenty for you on today's show. We're going to be joined by former youth player Guy Branston, who was a pivotal part of the 1998 promotion winning squad. We'll hear from him very soon. We're also going to have an update from the under 18s after their enjoyable exploits in their FA Youth Cup. They've got a key fixture on Monday, and we'll hear more about that very shortly, too. But first, it is January, which means the January transfer window. You've already heard about Tom Dallison. You've already heard about Cameron Cox. You've already heard about Corey Andrews. But today, just been announced that Colchester United have signed Emir Hughes. He's a midfielder, Welsh midfielder with 11 caps for the men's first team uh, for Wales, including two appearances at Euro 2016 and that historical run for Wales where they reached the semi-final. So that's a great signing for the U's. Plenty of experience, plenty of class. And we're going to see some highlights from him now before we hear how the move came about. United contracts, you know, how did it come about and what makes you bring you to Colchester? Yeah, I'm delighted, um, first and foremost. Um, it's nice to be back playing. Um, I think it came about quite quickly. Um, I know uh, the manager and the assistant from previous clubs um, and spoke to them and I've been training and I've enjoyed it and I've signed until the end of the season. I'm looking forward to it. And I, I suppose you, you want to join the club and get right quickly into things, but how difficult has it been having not played for, for a while? It's been pretty seamless, to be honest. Uh, I've kept myself fit, so um, I'm ready to go. Yeah. yeah. And you've obviously seen how culture are doing and know that the second half of the season's you know, got to provide more points in the first half of the season. So I presume you just want to be part of that group climbing up the table. Yeah, I mean, there's you know it's a good team and there's some talent in the squad for sure. We just um, from what I've seen, I think it's just a case of putting it in the net, creating a lot of chances. So I think that'll come. Yeah, and, and obviously the other thing that we hope to be seeing this is your integration into the squad. Does it make it easier that you know a few of the lads in there already? Yeah, it's always nice, uh, familiar faces, and the rest of the boys. Are a top, they've been really welcoming as well. So I'm looking forward to getting to know all of all the boys, and it's nice, it's re really nice. Yeah, I suppose the the short term aim is to kind of get up to 100% match fitness as quickly as possible, and get into the team as quickly as possible, and then to play as many games. Yeah. That's what all footballers want, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Um, that is the goal, and <clears throat> I think I'll I'll get there pretty quickly, and um, hopefully help the team and. Start winning some games. Yeah. How difficult is it to be trained on your own compared to training with the group? Um, I mean, it's something I think you, you get accustomed to, but um, it's all the same. I mean, fitness, but it is slightly different. And um, I just want to get back to playing matches and get that match, uh, match, match fitness again. So I'm looking forward to that. Excellent. Welcome on board. Cheers. So that's another January signing for the user. Amir Hughes, we're looking forward to seeing him play very soon indeed in the match day squad today. And a great pedigree from him. Uh, the Man City Academy, as I say, those 11 caps and a goal for the Welsh national team. So interesting to see what he is going to bring to the user. What do you think about our signing so far? Who would you like to see us sign? Do you think we're going to lose anybody? Anything can happen. It's the January transfer window. Let us know. Media at ColchesterUnited.net. Now, you notice I've got a guest in the studio. It's Guy Branston. Guy, thank you so much for joining us. Um, firstly, played for the U's in 98, but what brings you to North Essex today? 
Uh, well, now uh, the loans manager, uh, Leicester City Football Club, so I look after the, they're called the PDP uh, yep. development squad and I look after the lads that go out on loan and who go around the country playing and trying to carve a career for themselves. So I've kind of done that pathway myself and, and I kind of feel like I've got the, the right uh, pedigree and minerals to go and teach them how to do it. Sure. And so there's no free weekends for you at all. I no. imagine Leicester, big academy, sending players all over the country. You must have some long journeys under the belt. Yeah, broad. And, and um, obviously we've got one now coming, travelling down with the Barrow squad in Wakelin. He's going to obviously be involved today. Um, players in Preston, mm -hmm. uh, they're all around the country. <laughs> Warsaw. I'm trying to. I'm trying to not forget one. Just so <laughs> yeah, just so no one that. Shrewsbury, etc., etc., etc. I'm more to come this January. <laughs> yeah, 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 no doubt, no doubt. Um, you had a great time here at the U's. A short, a short stint, of course, but that promotion-winning squad. What do you remember about your time here, and what stands out specifically? Um. Meeting Paul Buckle, went on later mm -hmm. on to be the manager. Um, meeting Mark Sale, real good friend of mine. Skelt, Aaron Skelton, real uh -huh. good friend of mine. Um, just making real good friendships. They're an older group than me. They took me under the wing. Obviously, Dave, who works in the media department here, Dave Griffiths, Gregors, and uh, his brother, and uh, you know, various different guys were around. Carl um, Columbusum. Um, obviously, I remember them all. They were all just good, good people. And, and the two managers that, that I worked under so the one manager I worked under with the assistant with Witten was just good people to me. Like I was a, I was a young kid coming in from Leicester, had a lot of hair. They let me go out and buy hair products and made me uh, <laughs> find me a lot for being late because that was the, the the kind of way it was back then. And I travelled three hours uh, to get down here in a car because they'd done the A14. <laughs> and there's just various different like vague memories of like sleeping in a lay by with Saley and then getting here too early and sleeping in the <laughs> university at training. And, Various different good stories that we we come up with going kings and the hippodrome most most there you weekends. Go. Professional footballers yeah, yeah. go out. There we go. Most, I, most I, days in the week. I like that. Stint at the club and the best thing you remember is hair products and the A14. <laughs> no, must, like, it so must have been about and we got promoted that season as well. I, well I got sent off in the semis, remember, so what? it was uh, it was a disappointing time for me, but the Wembley trip I couldn't go on because Leicester invited me to the first team. Yes. Point. So I was gonna say you did get sent off in that in that first leg of the semi-final but your loan was going to run out after that game anyway wasn't it yeah i mean that must have been that must have been frustrating i don't know whether the sending off had any factor in your decision to get sent off no one decides to get sent off i'm sure no 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 but, no. but that must have been frustrating knowing even if you win you're not going to have that game at wembley well it wasn't decided so it was a, a, an understanding that i was going into that game not having the uh, the answer from martin o'neill okay. at the time so it was a bit of a, a a worry and a bit of a nervousness around the game but the whole the whole game kicked off for the right so it was a playoff semi-final so it was a great environment to be around as, as an 18 year old kid and to learn from some of the best in the lower leagues how to play the game and how not to play the game <laughs> and uh, it, I ran into a bit of a obviously a dispute with one of the players divine at the time and I can remember getting wound up by McLeish or most of the game as well Scott McLeish who obviously was yep. Colchester legend as well so it was a good little environment to learn and, and not what to do and, and, and what time to do stuff, you know. And the dressing room is always a great place to argue with the, the obviously course. the opposition. So I learned that very quickly as well. And <laughs> we got um, we got we got the message literally afterwards that I was going with the first team to America at the end of the mm -hmm. season tour. So the the feeling of disappointment from not being able to play in the final was soon uh, obviously joyous because I've obviously got in the first team squad for them to go to the America trip, which was a a new frontier for us because we were trying to promote the Premier League out there. So, yeah, I didn't even get a chance to, to travel with the lads to, obviously, the Torquay final at Wembley. Mm. But obviously, I got all, I watched it away in America of with course. the first team at Leicester. So, huge, huge responsibility to go with the Leicester crew because I'm from Leicester. But yeah. I was so happy they got promoted. It, yeah, definitely. It was, brilliant. it was a brilliant time. And do you think, as a young player, missing out on that final, you know, when you had some joy later in your career as well, it meant even more because you knew what it was like. Yeah, to I think the, the disappointments uh, in your career do make you realise how special um, the, 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 the joyous moments are because yeah. there isn't many of them. Yeah. I mean, and I try and explain this to the young lads that the, the bumps in the road come all the time, like literally all the time. And, and you've got to literally understand how to deal with them on a regular basis because the, the highs are so high. Yeah. Um, it can last you... 10, 15 years, some of the promotions, and I still speak about them now. Yeah, and exactly. that, that's the bizarre thing. It, you forget some of the, the, the bumps in the road. You, you don't forget moments like I've had. So I'm really pleased to be able to still 
these three hour journeys to come here, think <laughs> about promotions and think about, you know, relegation battles and keeping up in the leagues and be around them when they went, got promoted to League One at the time mm -hmm. and being around the you know, like good clubs like this and seeing how they've turned around and left Layer Road to obviously come yeah. to this fantastic stadium. Even in the fog, you can see it. I know, even if we're, we're yeah, it's, uh, the fog is lifting. We're, after last week, we had a very last minute postponement last week, 20 minutes before kickoff due to waterlogged pitch. So a few fearful fans today, but the game is on. Fear not, the game is on um so in, in your back to your current role at the moment who would you say has been the most notable player that you've seen out on loan as a Leicester City player that's come back and really made an impact in the first team or elsewhere um I'd say Harvey Barnes of course uh I come into the job I knew him from coaching him as a kid anyway because I'd have been in and out of the academy coaching yeah and now I'm basically coaching off the pitch so I knew him I worked with him he went to West Brom, did excellent, and then obviously we called him back. But the latest ones have obviously been to Dewsbury Hall for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Keane Dewsbury Hall, he's now got into the midfield of the first team. He's holding his own. He's with Tinnemans and, and Madison. And great accolade, did really well last season with Luton Town, and they did great with him. They looked after him fantastic. So it was a great working relationship between us all that I could speak to him on a regular basis. I could speak to Luton. Mick Arthur's a good contact to have there for me. Yeah. And and even, even the... Um, the the CEO we were speaking regular about his living accommodation about COVID, and it's having them intricate um, meeting points with the club that, that I think make the loan so successful. Yeah, for sure. Do you think? Do you feel a bit? Do you feel a sense of pride when mm. when these players appear in the first team? You think you know that you've played a crucial part of this. Harvey Barnes, you know, I know he's been injured for a while. They really miss him. You know, he's a key part of that first team, and you've played a key part of his. his it's almost I feel a bit like a child. You know, the, 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 these relationship with, the, with these guys that you look after them and, and see them progress. And, and being a, an ex-player, I like to also think that they've done the hard work. Sure. They've done it. Yeah. So as much as I've put a little bit of imprint in them yeah. and, and had a conversation with them, obviously knew Mr. Times on the blower and on the phone and and face to face. But yeah. They grab the, the the opportunities by by the the, the bull's horns yeah. and, and ride it. You know, and have a right or go at it. Some don't. Yeah. Some don't listen. Some, some. Some. I can't save everybody. No, of you course. know, it's that conversation to be had as well. But there is other lads that you think. Do you know what? Mm. You've listened and you've got your career to where it should go. Yeah. It's on the right track now. So I think there's loads of positives to come out of lads buying into you as well sure. and the rapport you can build sure. off the pitch. Same as management. That, that, that's what I've done it for. Yeah. To learn about management of players and to learn the different um, ins and outs, twists and turns that players will take within their career to try and help them and manipulate it back in, in line with everything they want to do. Well, it's a, you know, a great thing you're doing and, and the, you're reaping the results as, as are the Leicester first team. You're, you're still travelling around the country as you used to as a player. You play for lots of different clubs. Obviously, apart from Colu, who has been your favourite club that you played at? Um, I really enjoyed my time under Paul Buckle at Torquay. Yep. Had a great time um, with Oldham because of Ronnie Moore and then obviously the the, the five years at Rotherham were, were fantastic it was promotion after promotion so yeah. it was a sign there I think I'd come um, here got injured my second time I've been here got injured went back got fit went out on loan again like you do and three or four times a season like you could back then and then signed for Rotherham for 50 grand and had two back-to-back -back promotions next minute I'm back in the championship so it was a great little turnaround for me and five real good years there um, and then left for Sheffield Wednesday and then we could be here all day, but you ain't got enough TV, Phil. <laughs> Some big clubs. It's, it's great to hear that, you know, you can have so many good memories all over the place and you don't just have to stay at one club to enjoy yourself and have success. You know, you found it all over the place and, you know, it's great to have you back. I tried to enjoy it. But you tried to. <laughs> and yeah, I'm sure. I'm I tried sure to that. enjoy myself. I didn't want to get into football and not enjoy it. And, but, and even this, this job, you you got to try and take the positives. I mean, I get to travel to all these stadiums. I get to travel and mix with all these good people. Yeah. I try my hardest to, you know, to negotiate and, and network for the right reasons and, and make sure that people understand that, we, you know, these lads are cared for off, off the pitch. Of course, of course. And just finally on, on today's game, obviously I know that you've got to support Wakelin for uh, the centre forward for Barrow. School predictions though? On Call U TV? Well, there's there's not many goals going in by Barrow. <laughs> so I am hoping my boy comes on and, and uh, plays and not... Uh, plays a significant part but yeah. I also look at you know Colchester need to turn the form around quick Big time. so it's going to be a good little battle today the form's very much similar together uh, you know I think it's form wise 21st and 22nd yeah. in the yeah, league yeah, absolutely. so there's, a, there's a, a load of stuff going on but I think for me Barrow have nicked it this game yeah. just purely down to the fact is they've gone and freshened up and, and you've freshened up but like obviously 
I don't think you freshened up in the goal scoring area. They've, they've brought in three three signings. Uh, I think in the last couple of days. I think back, mm -hmm. so they've, mm -hmm. they've got some new faces in there too. Um, so maybe a three-two to the use with with your boy getting a couple for Barrow. But if they if he gets two and you get three, I'm yeah. well happy. Yeah, perfect. I'm happy too. I probably won't be allowed to go Barrow for the weekend, but <laughs> I've got to do a talk That's there. Done, so Bill. Then. Thanks, there and then. I never played for them, so they could do one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Guy, thank you so much for joining us. It's been no, uh, great no here about about your career and your, and your current career. Um, uh, back to today's game though, uh, and before we hear from head coach Hayden Mullins on his preparation uh, for the fixture this afternoon, let's look back at a memorable night from earlier in the season in Cumbria when the used took on Barrow away from home. it was a better performance on Tuesday yes yeah we um, we're happy with the performance but obviously not the result you know we we, we get caught in a situation where we, we're a bit of a scratch record at the moment I think the Crawley one was a was a poor performance from us um, you know even though periods of that we did okay but then I think obviously the Sutton was much improved and then obviously again at, at, at Forest Green so uh, yeah definitely you know definitely much improved in terms of performance even the attempts against us we're, we're restricting teams at the moment to, to very minimal stuff you know it's just yeah, us getting caught out when we're, we're just switching off in the wrong areas so yeah, we're getting punished at the moment but, um, but like you say the, the performance as a whole for the 95 minutes um, was one we, we were okay with we just weren't quite able to apply that finishing touch in, in the areas that mattered well we? no 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 and uh you know, plenty of chances, plenty of shots on target and getting in around the goal, but we um, just need one of those to fall to us. You know, goalkeepers making saves and parrying and you know, not, not quite dropping at the moment. And, uh, and obviously on the flip side of that, we've, we've got to be tighter in terms of the things we're doing. You know, blocking shots, staying with our men, stopping runners and, and those kind of details. So uh, you know, hopefully if we get that right, we, we can start turning them into positive performances. Corey Andrews obviously started, played the full 90 minutes. Are you happy with his performance? Yes, Corey, um, he'd only recently joined us, so we trained for a session. Um, and then obviously we lost Freddie Sears on the day of the game. He went down with a bit of a sickness bug, so uh, Corey came in and started. And we thought, you know, did well. Um, offered us an outlet up top. Um, looks a strong boy, powerful runner, looking to get his shots off. Obviously he's in uh, good form in terms of where he's at and where he's been in the National League. So I think it's 19 goals, 20 goal, 20 games, sorry, 9 goals, so he's in. He's in good form, so uh, he's brought that little bit of sharpness that we we were looking for up top. You know, with Freddie not being there, and uh, he helped us get up the pitch. 
and how are uh, Corey and Tom both settling into into the club? Yes, yes, very well. I think um, both are good assets. You know, good ages, uh, good players, um, and players that we hope will come in and push the squad and, and and push us on to where we need to get to. So yeah, we're both we're happy with both. Are you still looking in the transfer market? Obviously, there's still a long time to go in January. Is, is there anyone else that you're looking at too? Yes, yeah, yeah, we're still, we're still looking. We're actively looking um, in different areas of the uh, of the pitch and, and position. So we are still looking to strengthen, which is good. Um, hopefully, get some bodies in and, and really start pushing pushing each other around. You know, in, in terms of who will play and. Uh, you know, we, we need a real competition for places, which is good. So, um, yeah, we're still looking. So, uh, I'm not too sure when we we see some some news, but hopefully soon. Must be excited for a home game finally. Obviously, last weekend didn't quite go to plan, but uh, it, it would be good to get out in front of the home fans and, and finally get that game underway this year. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, a lot of travelling. We, you know, especially for us at the moment. Yeah, even going to Forest Green, it's like a three four hour coach journey. So. It's nice to be at home. You know, we've played a home game since um, since we drew with Newport in the league, and uh, before that we beat Exeter. So it's uh, it's one we're definitely looking forward to to being at home. And uh, we need to start off a run of games where we can get some positive results. And, and uh, we look to attack the game on Saturday. With Barrow being just above us in the table, is it is it too early to call it a six pointer? I think so. I don't, you know, I don't. I think we're just nearing the halfway point in the league. So. Uh, I think with this division, it's so tight that you've seen that. You know, Mansfield, for example, you put you put a run together, you can really jump up a couple of places, and uh, you know, it, it's a good game for us. There's no doubt in that. You know, as would have you know the Rochdale game uh, last Saturday would have been a, a very good game for us as well. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good game for us. It's one we're going to attack the game, and uh, hopefully, in front of our own fans, we can get a positive result. And is there any fresh injury concerns going into Saturday? No, no. If anything, we're gaining a few few more bodies back, which is good. So uh, um, we're looking stronger. Uh, I think the Sutton game we played, uh, our bench was really young. You know, we were hit with with COVID and injuries and and, and so on. So um, no, at the moment uh, we've we've got a few more bodies back, which is good. That's Hayden Mullins raring to go for today's fixture. It's Colchester United versus Barrow. And this is the lineup that Hayden Mullins has named to take on the boys from up north. Uh, so in goal is number 24. Jake Turner keeps his spot after good form since Shamal George has been out. It's a very, very welcome back to the match day squad and the starting 11 for Miles Welsh Hayes, who's been out for a short while with, uh, with injury. He is on the right hand side of a three man defence, which also consists of Luke Chambers and one of the new signings, Tom Dallison, starts on the left hand side of that three man defence. Cameron Cox is the left wing back, Junior Chamadu on the right. What a prospect he looks for the use. The midfield, two, as always, Cole Skews and Brendan Wiradu next to each other. Alan Judge just in front of them. And the U's today are going with two strikers Freddie Sears, our top goal scorer, and Corey Andrews. That is exciting. I am genuinely excited to see how this pans out. Uh, on the bench are our subkeeper Dean Gherkin, Tommy Smith, Luke Hannant, Frank Newblay also returns to the squad today. Very, very welcome back for him as well. Noah Chilvers, Tom Eastman, and that new man, Emir Hughes, makes up the substitutes. Looking for his impacts off the bench in the second half against, hopefully, a tired Barrow on, a, on what will be a weary pitch. Okay, we're going to move away from the first team quickly now and to the under-18s who have had a wonderful time in the FA Youth Cup. Liam Bailey's side knocked out Arsenal in the third round of the FA Youth Cup this season. Arsenal, one of the most famous academies in the world, lost to Colchester United under-18s and the U's have been rewarded with a fourth round tie away at Newcastle United, which will be played at St James's Park on Monday. Now, one of the key players of the cup run so far has been Brad Ionvian, and he spoke to our man Andy Carmichael this week. Brad, you must be delighted to sign for Colchester United. And you must be pleased to finally get, get the deal done. Uh, Obviously, there was a bit of interest in the summer, but I had to wait until January to get it done. Yeah, just more patience. And you mentioned before you played for Maidstone in the, in, in the youth setup as well? Uh, yeah. yeah, I was there for a long to four years. And how did you find that with them? Uh, very good. I enjoyed my time there a lot. Made, uh, made a lot of friends and met a lot of good people. You must have gained some valuable experience with, with those guys. How do you think yeah, that will help you coming into Colchester United? Um, I just feel like it, um, it helped me become, it's helped me become a stronger player, better player than played in that um, environment. Hopefully I can bring them, the strengths I've acquired from there. 
that. And how did the move come about? It's obviously not necessarily the most straightforward route from Col from Maidstone to Colchester United. Yeah, I think they've been watching me, Colchester have been watching me for some time and then they asked me to come to a, a trial game um, around August time, which I played and then they asked me to come on trial game. How did you find that game? Did you, did you score any goals? Um, did, was there anything that set you apart from any others? Yeah, I scored one goal, but to be honest, I don't think I played that well around the start. Um, obviously, they saw something I didn't see. And what are your goals for the rest of the season? Um, hopefully, just to push up into 23's first team. And end goals for playing? Do you obviously you want to get into the first team in Colchester? Right? Where do you see yourself? In how long do you see that taking? Um, I'm hoping to be in the 23s um, soon now at the end of the season. Hopefully training with the first team and stuff, but we'll just have to see how it goes. Was there any reason that Colchester United attracted you at all? Obviously there is a big push at the youth south at this club. Was that, was that any part of your decision making? Um, no, I just think they've been very um, accommodating situation I've been still being at school so uh, I, was, I was sort of see the tree be really nice in that aspect so I thought it'd be rude for me to you know go anywhere else or anything like that so I thought I should show the same loyalty that they've shown me. And you must be excited for, for Monday's game going into the FA Youth Cup at Newcastle. Oh well, yeah 100% I've um, followed the boys all over um, for the first three rounds so because I haven't been able to play so this is my first round to play and I hope I can bring something to the team. Maybe you must be excited for Monday's big game. Yeah, definitely. Um, the boys have been non-stop talking about it since, the, since we beat Arsenal in the last round. So, um, yeah, really excited. It's a big occasion for a lot of the lads, obviously. Heading up to Newcastle is a big club to go to. Yeah, again, another another big big club in the, in the draw. I mean, like Arsenal in the last round. Um, yeah, so the, the lads are really excited, as I said, and really looking forward to it. It'll obviously be a tough one, but you know, you've, you've beaten Arsenal already. Do you do you feel go there full of confidence? Yeah, I think the boys will, will go full of confidence. Um, it will be a, a tough game, just like the Arsenal game previously was. But Newcastle, but Newcastle are definitely a definitely a good good side with, with some good players as well. And you'll be able to draw on it, that experience from the Arsenal game, as well as the other games that we've had this season. Yeah, def the yeah, definitely. The, 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 the ride that we've had throughout, we started off in a non-league team with Bugbrook, we then went to Swindon that was, was Cat 3, Arsenal Cat 1, so they've had a, a really good experience of different types of games and, and different ways of playing. Um, so yeah, we draw from all of the experiences so far. That was under-18s head coach Liam Bailey and uh, good luck to Brad who we heard from just before on congrats on your new contract as well. Do us proud, keep that cup run going. Let's push on into the fifth round of the FA Youth Cup. So that's it from us today. If you're in the stadium, do make your way out to the ground. Cheer on the boys today. If you're not here with us, you can follow the commentary, the audio on iFollow. If you're not in the country, you can watch the match on iFollow with the match day pass. The game is on. There's no late postponements here this week. We look forward to it. Cheer on the use. Keep positive, test negative, up the use. We'll see you soon.